I'm Renee Fleming, I'm a soprano, and we are working on a production based on and about um, Italian opera, particularly at La Fenice here in Venice. So exploring a little bit of the, of the city, but also the repertoire that's been performed here historically and still today. And um, the very rich musical background to this extraordinary and beautiful theater. Well, the, the, the really the, the opportunity to collaborate with IMAX and stage access was a, a kind of a dream, you know, something that I would have wished for all throughout my career. It's, it's an opportunity to kind of blend the type of programming that people love so much right now, which gives the spirit and color, the flavors of a place, and blends it with the culture, because I am a cultural tourist. Everywhere I go, I want to see the theater, the museums, sample the food of course but i really especially love to see what people have created through history and this is an opportunity to do that and bring it to the public and of course the focus is on opera which is my love my life um, how i've spent my many years um, on stages uh, but singing repertoire that is so virtuosic and reminding people that we still don't use microphones we're unamplified it's a very special art form well, Venice is extraordinary, so I've been here one other time as a tourist, and something about this time, and maybe it's the time of year, the lighting, the fact that you wake up in the morning, if you're lucky, and you're staying in a hotel that has a water view, and you are looking down at water, and it's a bit shocking at first. You think, this, this must be wrong. We flooded, you know, something, and then you remember where you are. But uh, the fact that the city was built the way it was and has lasted these many hundreds of years um, and it's really still looking exactly as it did you know, when Canaletto painted it is um, an incredible gift and unique. There's nothing like it in the world. Well, Paris is um, my love. I sang at the Paris Opera for a solid decade plus and had a home there and I just fell in love with it. it you know, the, again, the culture of Paris walking the streets, and the architecture, the light. The fact that as I, I used to say that as I came in from the airport, my mood would lift because I knew I was gonna be encased in all of these buildings that were pretty much white and just so, so much light in that city. And, um, uh, and again, the culture, so many museums, and it is the opera capital of the world to have five or six different theaters that can present opera every night and be sold out there's no other city that has that. London is the music capital of the world, um, expanded to classical music of all kinds, but for Paris, it's really opera. La Fenice, first of all, I never, I, I, I think I saw it once um, as a visitor, but I've never sung here and uh, it's incredibly beautiful. And it's a jewel because it's not big. It's, you can feel that you can sing intimately which is a gift because I, I love to use the whole spectrum of my voice. I want the dynamic spectrum, not just being, feel like I'm compelled to sing at, as loud as I can for the whole evening. And, um, uh, and that kind of variety is exciting. The orchestra also plays with perfect style. This is, they live and breathe this music. It's in their DNA, it's in their history. So that's a real gift. And Ricardo Fritza, of course, I've collaborated with him before in Handel and, um, Donizetti, and so again, he is a perfect um, conductor for this repertoire because it's it's what he does. So, and my colleagues are extraordinary. I mean, uh, to sing with Francesco Meli, who's really at the top of his game in opera in Italy. You know, everyone I asked said he's the one to to try and sing with. Mattia Olivieri is just an up and coming baritone with the most gorgeous voice absolute style, I think he's gonna be a huge star, and we'll say we saw him now. And Paola Garadina is also a gorgeous mezzo-soprano who sings beautifully, um, and I love to just hear them sing in Italian. It's, for me, it's just, that's the way it should be. IMAX is the perfect format because it's big, and there's nothing bigger than opera. Opera is called grand opera for a reason. It's already larger than life. You're incorporating every art form into one art form. It's all there. So what better way to see it than on the largest screen possible if you can't see it live, or in addition to seeing it live? Well, we, we've worked very hard on the repertoire, on, on 
thinking about the concept of it, um, kind of putting together the idea and the notion that you know um, there have been there's been programming that's cultural programming that, that people really love, whether it's Chef's Table or Anthony Bourdain, these types of things that give allow people to travel without traveling, I think are very attractive and it's never going to be seen as it will be seen here. I mean, I, I can't say I've ever been filmed by drones. The fact that we can be outside, that we can see these images from so many different directions, it will be absolutely unique. Well, uh, what we've done is focus, or try to focus on the repertoire that belongs in each place. So obviously Paris was French opera, and I know a lot about French opera. I've sung quite a bit. I think the stories are extraordinary. Um, there's so much more that we could tell uh, than we can do in 90 minutes. And um, here in Venice, of course, so many of the greatest opera composers in history started here, premiered their works here, Verdi, Rossini, I mean, so many others. And to be able to tell these stories, and for me, standing on the stage where they were premiered is especially moving. You know, I used to just touch, I kiss the stage. There's something about wanting to be connected to the lineage of what came before that makes classical music so special. Now, these performances, first of all, they're beautifully filmed, beautifully lit. It's a completely different perspective because it allows the audience to be on stage because they're looking at us, but they're also looking at the house. And I think that's, that's kind of a special thing. Um, you know, rather than seeing sets, we're seeing the extraordinary ceiling paintings and the, the frescoes and the, you know, the, all of the trompe l'oeil that's in each of these theaters. So I, I think for the audience, again, they're with us on stage. I think they'll get gorgeous music, they'll have beautiful sound, they'll have gifted singers um, singing a variety of repertoire, and we try to kind of have uh, me paired with someone who is also at the top of their game and, and well known, and also to kind of feature some up and coming singers as well, so the audience can root for the next generation. And I love that, I think that's very important. And people did that for me too when I was growing and, and coming on the scene, and older singers were just incredibly generous to me. So um, we're trying to kind of also present um, the orchestra and make a feature out of the orchestra. I don't, I, I think the audience, I, I would, could get so much pleasure out of just watching different players and thinking about the collaboration, you know, when in strife, the strife that we have right now in the world, I think an orchestra is the perfect example of collaboration. And with super le leadership and the will to create something beautiful, and if we could just apply that to society, we'd all be in better shape. One of the things that's great about performance um, and beautiful music is that in, in given the, the amount of pressure that we're under now and how fast technology is moving, how fast our lives are, and how much work we're, we're really uh, um, compelled to achieve in one day. To be able to sit in a theater, or to sit in an IMAX theater, and just allow something very beautiful to wash over you. To be reminded of, of the history, the beautiful history, the, the cultural and um, artistic history that has really made us who we are. You know, and starting with, I mean, I think back to Shakespeare and before that, the first operas. And it just, first of all, I learned two things. One, we don't change that much. We don't, the evolution does not move very quickly as when it comes to human beings. So that explains a lot. But secondly, we've also created a lot of beauty. And, and that's valuable for us right now. It can calm us down. It can, it can really change your state of mind you can kind of um, connect with yourself again if you allow yourself the time to listen to music.